it's interesting because people have a sort of romantic sort of sensibility about uh, the underworld and crime and all this sort of stuff, you know, and they kind of imagine that barbers might be involved in that world a little bit. So, you know, they quite like all of that stuff. My name's Frank Reimer. I'm the owner here at Thy Barber in London. I'm Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I work at uh, a little shop in uh, Harlands called Scoreham. I'm Paul Harmer, I'm manager here at the Ibarba. My name is Wes Jones. Um, I own a shop called the Heartbreak Club in Leon City, Essex. Go on, Wes, you got white shirt on. Go on, Wes. Go on, Wes. Go on, Wes. Um, how'd you get your shirt so clean? Who am I talking to? Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> 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 Mate. Oh. No, me and me and Wes met at the at the Pro Hair 2016 in Manchester. Touched penises. <laughs> and uh, no, it was uh, yeah. Well, for me, because uh, at the time I was discovering like um, score them and what they're about. Men. Men. <laughs> I was discovering real men. <laughs> And uh, no, and I saw the poster that they did, and uh, I was as a fan, so I drove up from Bristol, and Wes there from Essex, and we sort of like got to know each other through that. Whereas these guys, uh, I sort of knew them at events, and we said hello, and we sort of knew the same people. And then I got stranded here in December, and they looked after <laughs> we took it. Them in. They took me in. Took yeah. Me in. <laughs> it's quite difficult actually getting them in photo shoots when to get them to stop fucking about most of the time, as I'm sure you've realised when you try to interview them. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. It's a competition at taking the piss out of each other. Whoever gets the best one-liner of the day just yeah. normally puts. So far, Wes is losing. Yeah. <laughs> Wes isn't it witty. What's the worst prank you've ever played on each other? Oh, don't. Be uh, yeah, uh, we'd probably be arrested because I don't think I put talcum powder in your hairdryer once. Yeah, that was. Pretty <laughs> that was pretty good. I think it's the dick slaps that you guys do. Yeah, I don't know if that's a London thing or. I, I got hit in the uh, penis so hard. <laughs> No, I had to go to the uh, the hospital because I thought I had a hernia. <laughs> His whole pubic that, region was bright purple. Yeah, that wasn't was cool. That, and then the doctor said, I don't know what's going on. So <laughs> I left it and it's fine now, guys. It's I've never good. had them walking past each other just going... Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just a little tap. And it's just... That's all you can see going on in the shop every now and then. Look at the and you know it's wrist. happened because the hairdryer just, just turns off and... Oh, it's a brief <laughs> moment of silence. It's a brief moment of silence. That's why I'm sitting down like this. Well, some, of, some, some of them try to do it as well. We've got, we've got a lot of banter in our shop. I mean, our customers are like mates, aren't they? They're, they're, none of them are like, none of them seem like customers anymore. They all come in, so they actually. Try. In fact, haven't you had a customer bag you? Yeah, I've had a customer have a little flick Just of it. Yeah. This is the most homoerotic interview I've ever had, by the way. So your customers pay you to get dick slapped? Basically, We're yeah. We're not dick slapping people. We're oh. slapping people in the dick. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> And why? And why? Oh, and why? <laughs> uh, right, okay, so my favourite haircut right now is probably like a forward skin faded crop. Um, why? Because it's kind of bringing new ages of like punk into today's um, lifestyle, I suppose. My favourite haircut is a long trim pompadour because it is so versatile and traditional. Practical and alluring. Exactly. <laughs> uh, my favourite haircut is the flat top because to me it's the base of all haircuts. <laughs> Damn! No, my favourite haircut is the uh, long trim pompadour because, again, like you said, it's very, very versatile. But for me, it shows all aspects of barbering. You've got clipper work involved, scissor work, a lot of blow drying technique, and very, very heavy styling. So for me, it's got um, it's just got every aspect that we do in the shop in one single trim. That's why I like that one. Oh, I mean, I suppose the inspiration behind the haircuts is only because it's vintage. I mean, we, you can see by the way everyone dresses here. Uh, apart from Wales. <laughs> <where's. laughs> <laughs> Daz White. Daz White. <laughs> Fill in a void. Hipster in the room. I'm just filling a void. No, but what, what I think it's, it's the love of history. Uh, you know, like when you get into something, you really kind of you, you can't help but research into it. And for me, like I've always loved seeing anything from the early 1900s up to the early 60s. 
Um, I mean, especially in Britain, where we've got so the forefront of fashion going, it's forever changing here, especially in this city. And for me, it's just trying to find something that's never going to become dated. You know, as much as it's like nearly 100 years old, in fact, some of these haircuts are over 100 years old, they'll never go out of fashion, and that's what makes them timeless. And for me, that's why I love them so much. You know, so I think that's where my ain't, passion behind it is. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. That's, yeah, our, wall, that's our wall of shame. Uh, I'm probably going to join them all at one point, so I'm going to get ridiculed for growing my hair out being a barber. But uh, yeah, that's all the hippie killers, that, they're all the hippies that were killed on the wall. Flat top mullet. I really want to do a flat top mullet. I've done one once, and I want to do another one, but oh, I wish they'd come back. Um, <laughs> please come nice. back. My, yeah, I, I do, but it depends on how I feel. I, I, white. It depends on how I feel. It depends on the date. You'd love to do a white, crop but, but to the side. <laughs> that's the thing. I, I, I like doing stupid shit with hair because it's hair it grows back. It, you know, it's fun. Uh, we should have it's art. We should have some fun with it. So. Depends how I feel. If someone comes in with long hair and they said do what you want, I'm like, I'm probably gonna do them free haircuts because I'm gonna fuck around with it, take some cool pictures, and then get it to something that actually looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, for my one, it's the only one on the poster I haven't yet fully done. I almost did it uh, the Hold other on. day. Flat top boogie. I've done that. I've, I've, never, I've never done it. I've I came a, close. I've a regular, that's it. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we, so what do you need though. to introduce? We, yeah. We've introduced two. Got it. If they've got good hair for it and they're like, oh, I don't really know what I want. Yeah. All right, mate, let's get what you're given Tuesday. You sit down, you shut <laughs> up, you get what you're given. I think it's, it's all that we all sort of like the same sort of subculture of it all. We like yeah. the whole, it's about having Mesh. a bit of a giggle, but nice. I think we, you know, for all of us, it's still all about the haircut. Things will come from that, like... Yeah. Being kids as well, we grew up listening to the similar. I mean, you're 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 a you're a beachhead. You were like you grew up in Speech Town, didn't you? So you had that like yeah, um, gypsy vibe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, just kind of grew up in like punk and like rock and roll kind of side of things. So, and boys over the west. And boys over the west. So for us, it was like I don't know. It's just the way we were when we were outside of school growing up. So we just yeah. kind of we haven't grown up. I don't think we should grow up, so no. you know, we bring that into our shops and the way we are as people day to day. So, you know, cutting hair in kitchens and like bleaching their hair and like dyeing it bright red and mohawking it with soap water, and that, that's the background we all come from. So, you know, why stop doing that? I don't want to change that. No. Like, if, if I changed it, I'd fucking know I'd miss it. Yeah. Right. The idea of putting soap in your hair and then ironing your hair for a mohawk just seems a bit. <laughs> it fucked me. Oh, <laughs> Should have used dub, mate. Oh no! <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, I, I think that's where it all comes from. Yeah, I think so. And a lot of men just don't know how to wash their clothes. So when they go into Wes's shop, they know what products to use. They know how long to put it in for. It yeah. works out well. <laughs> I just love that that Johnny Cash YouTube one though, where he does the Elvis impression and he ruffles his hair. <laughs> and he does yeah. Like this. I don't know. I know where a proper greaser he grabs his like comb and like. 30 seconds, perfect. That's exactly where his hair goes. <clears throat> Thank you very Excuse me while I comb part of my hair. <clears throat> I was walking down the street today and a barber came out of a barber and shop. Barber shop said, hey, I'll give you an estimate. So. Uh, Mine was always Elvis, hence the name The Heartbreak Club for my shop. <laughs> it was, oh, it was, uh, yeah, I couldn't call the shop the Heartbreak Hotel. There's a few licensing issues with that. So I went, I went with a club, but yeah, it was always about Elvis. I like Elvis because women love him. Like, whereas Johnny Cash. <laughs> and I want to like what women <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I like for them. But Johnny Cash was, I suppose, the darker side of things. Like, as well, well, as he's a really naughty boy. Yeah, when he got his hair cut into a flat top, he goes to the army. As much as I love the rebellious nature of Johnny Cash and like his dark side, like Elvis was, I don't know, he brought that bit of light, that bit of fun to the party. And I think that, that was more, more for me when I was younger. How about you, Frank? It's hard for me because I've grown up listening to so many different things. Like my, my dad was, like, he was born in the 40s, so he's always listened to rock and roll. So I've grown up listening to rock and roll vinyl since I was born. So it's so hard for me to pin down a favourite. But I was the rebe I was the rebellion one, uh, the rebellious one in my family who grew up wanting to listen to punk, heavy metal, and all these like 
horrible sounding like <laughs> music to my parents and you know distorted guitar yeah guitars. but it was it's you know realistically the stuff that i hated as a child was these three chord rock and roll things like which i thought was so basic that a monkey could play it now i turn around to him go, that's the basic of all music that's ever been done since the 50s <laughs> yeah i play guitar yeah, I mean, everyone is. He played something kind of play, He plays play. a triangle. Yeah. Just the back end team. Um, yeah, Mike is kind of for my strings. Yeah. So for me, but I've always grown up listening to everything. So I've listened to blues, classical music, country music, like rock and roll, heavy metal, punk, and all these things. I mean, I, but they all, they all come from the same background. So I can't really say who's my favourite artist, really. Because yeah. one minute I'll be listening to Andrew Pacelli with my dad, and the next thing I'll be putting Pantera on. So we did that, actually. We did that, we yeah. Did. Oh my god. Yeah, he's How do women react when you cut their boyfriend's hair off? Do you ever get these? A lot of them flirt with me. <laughs> <laughs> they Obviously. Don't. Only has to sex them often. Yeah, I have to <laughs> tell them to sit down. Uh, <laughs> Put a towel down first. Don't ruin the applause. No, normally it's, well, they tell us they look great, but when they leave the shop, they probably say their arseholes don't go back there. Well, this is why no. I love the fact that girls can't come in where I work, because yeah, then true. girls will say, right here, he's having this, and then it's like, mate, do you tell her what to have? And uh, it's like, no. It's like, well, no, mate, you sit down, yeah. and we'll do you. So we'll we, do you. We've got a thing in our shop where, like, we, obviously, we can't not allow women into the shop. No. Because we, we're in a restaurant bar where it's all open. Yeah. I probably wouldn't want to do that anyway. No. But if a girl or a girlfriend or a wife tries to get involved in a man's consultation, we tell them to sit down because well, it's not, it's, a man wouldn't do that to in, a woman in the, in the nicest, in the uh, nicest possible, possible way, no, though. It's not like way. Yeah. 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 There's none of that. It's like, basically, unless he's 12 or under, what is the point in you getting involved in this consultation? Because it's he's a grown, a, he's a grown man. man. No. He pays <laughs> taxes. He's a grown man. He pays his taxes. Like, you know, he works nine to five. I'm sure he can decide if he wants a three or a one. <laughs> <laughs> we have a thing in our shop. We say no pay, no save. Oh, yeah. Unless she's paying, she ain't fucking saying. Right. No she's paying, she ain't saying. You heard that somewhere before. <laughs> <I remember. laughs> I, think, I think what's going on with the world at the moment, I think is actually quite... Um, upsetting because people can't be themselves everyone's scared to say what they want to say and don't get me wrong I'm very I'm, I'm all about being PC but if you're having a joke with someone it's just a joke yeah. and it shouldn't it, you shouldn't hold back from being yourself because the moment you start trapping that inside you you can become depressed and I, I that's what the, the barbershop brings the best out in people it really does. I had a guy in the other day who works in media and you could tell he's not normally this very outspoken person. Probably someone that was, might get teased, like he, he might get teased in the office. The moment he sat in this chair, he became himself. He became a lot louder by 35 minutes into, like, into the, him being here. He had a couple of whiskeys, and he was so grateful that he was just in the shop and could be himself for that, for that short amount of time that when he walks back out there into normal life, he, he probably walks down with his head up, like down the street with his head really, really high, feeling it looks great, and just feeling good about himself in general. And that's the beauty of this place. It's not the haircut. It's, barbering's not all about hair, hair cutting. It's, it's about a personal relationship between a man and, and, his, uh, and his customer, or a man and his barber. And that relationship they have, I think is a huge privilege for both human beings. The reason it's coming back is again what we're coming back to about everything. everyone's liking old-fashioned stuff again because back in the day when it was done properly it was made to last yeah everything was made to last cars they had no electrics in them it was just pure mechanics that's why the 50s cars and the 40s cars are still running today in america uh, we don't have them as much over here but they are there's nothing that's over complex uh, people are making like, like hand making tailored suits again. People are baking their own bread, making their own candles, and this is like this all goes back to people 
doing their own thing. Everyone's buying fish at the fit like the mongers. Everyone's going back to the to the bakers. And you know, th these are all things that I think have yeah. been lost. It's traditions like coming, coming around, and they're coming back because people like quality. And I think that's what sets us apart from a lot of other people yeah. now. Is the fact that we're. Yeah. Really, I mean, uh, jokes aside, we're we're really immature when we get together. But when you watch these guys cut hair, it's focus and the passion comes out and like I'm just going to get real for a minute like you guys are some of the best barbers I've ever seen and you can see that when they work and they love doing what they do and that's what like no. you're saying about the movement I think now I've been with the resurgence of it all obviously when when we all started let's say 10 15 whatever years ago like there wasn't social media 50 years ago um, there wasn't social media and stuff <laughs> And now I think that that's been the massive part of why it's such a boom now, because people want to show off what they can do. Like before, it wasn't, I don't want to say it was a job, but you've done it because you needed to put food on the table and you needed to give your patrons a haircut. Like now it is though you get to the point where it's like, right, I want to show the world what I can do. So uh, Bike Shed, where we are now, um, run a show every year uh, in Tobacco Dock in London where they show lots of custom motorbikes. And I went there to uh, look for a new series of paintings really, just featuring a load of bikers and custom bikes and things like that. And I was uh, shooting around and I didn't really see anything interesting, but uh, Thai Barber had a little concession there and they were like cutting people's hair. And uh, as you can tell, I haven't been to a barber in many years, so uh, I didn't really know that there was this whole sort of movement of these barbers uh, and they, their very sort of unique look. And I saw uh, Paulie, first of all, uh, and I just went up to him and I said, is it all right if I take a few reference shots? I want to try and make a few studies and things like that. So he was like, yeah, go ahead. So I photographed Paulie and Frank and uh, didn't really think anything of it, just thought it was interesting, went home did a few sort of oil studies in the studio, um, whacked them on Instagram, didn't think anything of it, I was working on a load of other stuff. And uh, suddenly it just like, people started contacting me, they really hit big on Instagram. And so, uh, other barbers, yeah, and, and people who follow them, because they have large sort of social media, you know, followings. So, from there I, I came in here and I said, look lads, why don't we do a few more paintings and you know, can you introduce me to some more guys that are like you? And they're like, oh yeah, no problem. And they were so supportive. They were really into what I was doing. And uh, it was really interesting to me to have like these young guys into my sort of old school Renaissance style art, you know, because I paint in oils, I paint in very sort of, uh, you know, sort of Renaissance style. And, and they, were, uh, they were so into it. And then all these other barbers were into it. So I started painting all these other guys and then before long I had enough to have a, a, a sort of a small show and I invited all the barbers to the show. We had it just around the corner here in a, in a basement in East London and, uh, and all the paintings sold. So it was like, I think about 18 paintings, they all sold and uh, it, it was just really successful and I really enjoyed doing it. And the people are just so creative, they're so inspiring themselves. Um, I think really it was the, the level of passion that they have for their work. You know, they do mess about and everything, but they are deeply serious about what they do. And they are artists in their own right. You know, they really are. And they do it day in, day out. And uh, they're, they're really incredible at what they do and really work hard at being very good at what they do. And that is really inspiring. And I really, I, I didn't realise that at all. I thought it was cutting hair and it isn't. You know, it's so much more. Oh, fuck, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Take two.